usually I would prepare like a, a PowerPoint or something like that, but I decided to kind of wing it. I'm going to have to hold on to my notes. But my topic tonight is going to be about unplugging to connect and living a balanced digital life. And the way that I look at a digital life is, this is my digital life. So I have my trusty MacBook. I have my trusty iPad. I have digital camera, bunch of cords, all this stuff that, and this is the worst one of them all, the iPhone. So I'm not just a walking Steve Jobs or an Apple thing. It just happens to be I like Apple products. But all these things connect me in my life, and probably not really well. Um, you think these things actually make your life easier. They actually make them more complicated. I was telling Judy this on the, when we were kind of discussing this earlier. Sometimes I feel a little too connected, and it's really not a healthy thing. Um, this portable life is actually an umbilical cord that's not disconnecting me. It's wrapped around my neck and choking me. So I've never really had an addiction in life. I've never really had something that really tore me down or not drugs. It wasn't alcohol or anything like that. But about two months ago, I realized I'm addicted to these things. You guys are probably too. It's probably going to be some psychological um, phenomenon that they're going to have some pill for soon. But it's like an itch that you can't resist scratching. And, it, and when you think you don't want to scratch it, it just inevitably makes it worse because you keep scratching it. You've got to get on there. You've got to get your emails. You've got to get your text messages. You've got to do all these things. And you just become too connected, and it's just not healthy. Um, my digital life is kind of weighing me down and kind of affecting my real life. I like movies and stuff like that. My real life is in IMAX. It's in 3D right now. But I felt like I was living like an avatar life where it was Pandora instead of Shreveport Bossier uh, and my surroundings. So I kind of had an aha moment where I was living in a state of my constant on um, phenomenon. Just my on button was never had an off position. It was constantly on. And I found my stress levels weren't being alleviated through these conveniences. They were actually being increased. And they just took a hold of me and made things worse. I felt like I became like, if you like Star Trek, I felt like a Borg. Like I just felt like this connection of cell phone to head and just, you know, just, and I just, there was a communication tool that just kind of got um, out, of, out of whack. So the realization I had was I was being too accessible. My sister pointed this out to me. She goes, you answer that thing and you, you respond so quickly that in this digital world, you're just kind of living excessively. And that's what I felt. I felt like I was just ex excessive in every way that, uh, 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 that the word can be kind of defined. And it really created a real burnout for me. And it just started creating chaos on balancing my life. This blur was, where's my real life? Where's my digital life? And where do they begin and end? There's no boundaries. And I started asking myself, well, what happens when I don't immediately respond to a call, a text message, an email, picture, you know, uh, Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now, the horror, the horror. You know, what, do I, what happens when, when I don't answer these things? And you, you look at, you know, if someone sends you a text, and if you don't respond in five, five seconds, you're ignoring me. You're, you know, if you send an email, it's not responded to within the hour, then you get that text message, it's like we were talking about. Then the voicemail, and it's like, why are you ignoring me? And sometimes it just it doesn't, it doesn't compute. And so what really happens when I don't respond, I started realizing, especially if you do it within less than 24 hours, you know, you get a good night's rest and you answer it with a clear head the next day because I get a lot of stressful things coming in my inbox and sometimes you're processing it too fast. And that was the real problem that I ran into was I was basically dealing with responding too quickly. I'd get an email, respond immediately, whatever it was, if it ticked me off, if it pushed my buttons, I was responding emotionally just because I had access to a response mechanism. And it just wasn't healthy. The brain to communication tool Sometimes you need time to digest those things. And my brain was fused to this communication. It was just completely unhealthy. I had half-baked ideas that were being shared with the world, either on my Facebook or in emails, half-cocked emails that were sent, outraged text messages, and just really bad juju flowing out of me um, because it was, I wasn't processing these things and digesting them and putting them in their proper context. Sometimes you have to step away from these things um, to really understand where their place is and how to properly respond to them. And then also I had a couple other things that I realized, that the power of the pause and reflection before action. And I really realized those are really powerful things. 
And when you're always connected, you don't really apply those principles. You don't reflect before you act. You just do it. And the worst one of them all is my warped sense of social media. And um, I see it every day in my, my workaday world. I see it myself. And I started realizing these things, the social media phenomenon is really only a couple years old. And it really started to affect me in the sense that I realized it was taking away my power to be in the present and having real interactions with people. And I started going, this is crazy. I'm not, I'm not having the real interactions I used to have. You think you're connected, but you're actually just disconnecting from these people uh, that you're in your life, your family, your, your loved ones, and your friends. And I found myself being a reporter in my own life. I felt like, oh, this just in. I got to tell everybody about that. And, and I, was, I was reporting and needing to get back to home base, Facebook, and tell the world what I was doing instead of living my life to the fullest. And it, it really started affecting me with lunches with friends and meetings and family time. And just I was always checking in, reporting, and needing to tell everybody what I was doing. I was like, why can't I just live my life? And I'll reflect on those things later in, in, on Facebook. So the social media machine, and that's really what it is, is designed to be fed. It's, it's one of those things, especially the way fa Facebook and some of the social media things now, is if you're not posting to them, you're moving to the bottom of the social media pile, and who wants to be down there? i got to keep feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. And so it just really, um, it's not a game. It's not a platform. It's your life we're talking about here. And so you have to choose to when to get in the game and when to step out of it. And I've slowly kind of found the balance there. It's also led to kind of dysfunctionality and multitasking, in your digital life, I mean, how many times are you emailing, you're getting a text? I mean, I, I find that just crazy. Productivity just suffers dramatically. It's, it, and it's really not about the hours we work. It's really about constantly jugg juggling too many things at the same time. And it just really, you're not, you're not getting anything done. I mean, how many times have you guys done some of these awful, horrible digital life things? You're answering email where you're on a conference call, and sometimes you're doing that with only one person on the phone, and you're emailing, you're texting away. And then, you know, you brought a laptop to a meeting and pretend you're taking notes while you're really reading the latest gossip on The Dark Knight Rises on Ain't It Cool News or something. Um, I'm, uh, this is one of my big ones that I do. I have a keyboard protector you can see here. Why do I have that? I have that because I shake the crumbs out of when I'm eating at my desk during my lunch. It's stupid stuff like that. And I'm guilty of looking up stuff on the Internet, texting while I'm driving down I-20, I mean, I've reviewed and approved a budget in Excel on my mobile phone while I'm driving down 157 in Houghton. It's stupid. And so it's, it's these kind of things. That it's not being productive. And, and it's not just the biggest cost of productivity. It's assuming I don't crash. Is, is, it's, it's just detrimental to you in so many ways. And so you usually, you know, partially engage in multiple activities, but you're rarely fully engaged in, in any one of them. And so just by stop multitasking and working, you actually can finish a task an average of 25% quicker. And so it's just a drain on your reservoir of energy. There's only so many hours in the day juggling all these things. It really um, slows you down. So from my own experience, um, where was I going with this? Uh, obviously, there's ways to fuel higher productivity, and you need to do it in finite, absorbed focus and in shorter periods. Um, to really get real renewal from your digital life, you have to disconnect. And that's obviously the topic of the night. And so how do you do this? This is something that's a work in progress for me. But there is a way to have an art and power in the disconnect. And so some of you are going, well, how do you, where do you get started? Well, you just got to get started. And, it, you know, one of the things that I realized uh, recently was I went on a vacation to Hawaii. And one of the best things my sister told me was, like, you really have to unplug, John. You really can't do anything, and, and she said, but do one thing for yourself. Check your email once a day, you know, just so that when you come back, you're not snowed in. And so I did that, and, and that was really a great way. So there's ways to connect, check in, check out of your life. But the other thing that I've really practiced lately is I've taken back my Sundays as a natural point of a digital disconnect, and I'm doing that, and I'm having a, a much greater relaxed weekends because of it. And it's just something that I'm doing for myself. So however you need to disconnect, it could be tonight, after this TED Talk, you just turn your phone off, and um, you, can really, you can really just find little moments of the disconnect, and you just have to apply them. Um, 
And so how, so where do you begin on this digital disconnect? And how do you make new strides every day? Well, at home, like I said, maybe you need to unplug your Wi-Fi connection. That might be the, the actually physically unplug it, you know, or turn off the data on your smartphone. Actually, somebody showed me this the other day. When you actually physically turn off the data or turn off the uh, 3G connection or whatever, you basically, it's a physical thing. You have to turn it back on. And so that's just a small thing you can do. And just stop interacting with your phone while you're talking to people. I, I found myself, it's just, it's just rude. You know, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a thing you lean on. It's like a crutch, but it's, it's when you're bored or you're just looking for something to do. And I, I mean, I don't know. There's so many ways to do a digital disconnect. One of them um, that we talked about at Cohabitat the other day was make a game of it. You know, uh, basically take your, take your smartphone, pile them up on the, 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 uh, the table at the restaurant you're eating at with your coworkers. And the first one that grabs the phone, they got to pay the bill. And you'll see everybody start to pay attention and interact more. It's, it's amazing, you know. And so um, try some of these things. So you got to really break the digital chains and feel the freedom in that disconnect. Um, it kind of is rejuvenating your soul. And sometimes you just got to learn to be still and realize I don't need to fidget. I don't need to futz with my phone. I need to, to, maybe I need to write. I need to do yoga. I need to read a book, engage nature. So the digital Sabbath is different for all of us. It can be a time of day or a day of the week. However it works for you, just do it. Um, so here's five steps that I can tell you how to do a digital Sabbath. Determine why you're going on that mini sabbatical. Is it because you really need this escape? What are you trying to escape from? Is it work? Is it, I mean, just kind of make a mental note of why you're doing it. Set a date, a time that works for you. It might not be what I do. It might be something completely different. And then list out the activities that you're going to do because you're taking this digital connect, disconnect. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to have coffee with friends. I'm actually going to live life. Um, and then make yourself accountable. Um, just, you know, make it something that's a, a habit. And then just make it, take it one step at a time. This is a, a progress for me. It's not something that I'm good at, but it's something that I'm working at. Um, and find what you've lost in your digital life above all else. Um, you've got to find those natural stopping points at work, at home, finish lines and set boundaries because when they blur all together, it's just constant chaos. I mean, wherever we go, our work, our digital life, it follows us. On our digital vices, it's, it's insistent. It's intrusive. Um, and just really believe that you have the strength to disconnect from constantly living on. It just, it's not a way to live. Power down, unplug, reconnect with your real life. Make a digital Sabbath part of your routine today. The freedom to live untethered every once in a while is not an option. It's actually really a necessity. And I'm going to leave you with this last statement. Disconnecting from your digital life is not only an upgrade to your operating system as a human being, but it's a requirement to reboot your soul for balance and harmony in the digital age. Thank you.